So we'll say part two, YouTube usage. So last week we, um, we worked on um, creating the video. Created a video, now it's time to use it. Create a video now. It's time to use it. Uh, we'll set up a YouTube channel. Set options and settings. Optimize ourselves for views and subscribers. So YouTube uses slightly different terminology. There's a channel instead of a profile or a page, it's a channel. And instead of followers, it's subscribers. But it's the same idea. I, I need people to pay attention to me or follow me, my business, whatever I'm uploading to YouTube. Uh, YouTube can be used to make money not just spend money. On every other network, we've talked about how you can pay to boost your posts, pay to get more visibility. You can do the same thing here, but um, it's going to be the opposite in terms of you can also make money off of, off of YouTube. It's called monetization. Monetization. I'm going to put an asterisk on that because we'll come back to that topic deeper. Okay, so before we get into creating the account, um, I want to give you a handout. We'll look at this, at the content of this handout, and then we'll create the account in the network folder in our Social 3 class. Go to the Network Folder Social 3 class and then get a copy of this document I put in here, Campos uh, Social Media YouTube Ideas. Copy that to your desktop or your flash drive or you can print it out a little later. But go ahead and copy that. Okay, so once you get a copy of that, there's a little preamble. YouTube's been around since 2005, so that's a little over a decade now. YouTube has uh, hosted uh, billions of content and uh, so much, uh, so much content. And it all started with uh, someone making a recording of the San Diego Zoo. So the first YouTube video was about the San Diego Zoo. In this handout, I have a list of types of videos. Uh, it's, not ex it's not exhaustive. There's other kinds of videos. But I present these six ideas here uh, as a way of, well, how can I use YouTube myself for my business? Last week, uh, it was like some video tech review, the tech review with Victor. So let's say I'm a uh, web designer or I'm some sort of uh, tech person, blogger or something. I could have used YouTube to create reviews about these products. Uh, some people will be more interested in reading the review. Others are more interested in watching the review. So it would behoove me to uh, do my reviews as text and perhaps also as video. And then we'll look at these other examples in a moment. YouTube can complement um, your existing content. And the example would be a uh, technology blogger writes reviews of the technology 
and creates videos or video reviews too. Now that sounds like double the work, and it is, but you can decide how complex to be. Maybe you spend most of the time on you know the 500 word article or the 1000 word article and then you create a one minute video you don't have to create another five minute or ten minute or whatever 30 minute uh, epic review in addition to the video uh, to the text the text could be the important part and then the video could be secondary or vice versa you could spend your time on making the video the big important thing let's say a 10 minute review video and then a, a quick you know 100 word one paragraph write up to accompany it so reason some will want to read while others will want to watch So let's say that video we created last week, uh, you saw that uh, when I recorded it, it was probably like a minute and a half of raw footage, and then we cut it down to maybe like a minute, uh, something like that. That kind of video would fall into the types that I've got in the handout. But then I would, uh, in addition, on my website, also uh, create the blog, or the article. So on your site. So let's say I've got victorsreviews.com on your site. Uh, do the write-up and on YouTube upload your video which can be embedded back onto your site. So I really recommend to use YouTube as the storage location for your video content. If you've got your own website, you, you have a place to upload your videos to. Let's say I went to GoDaddy and I bought an account and I upload my videos to my GoDaddy account. That'll, that'll work, but it might be better, and I recommend it, to instead have your videos on YouTube for several reasons. So recommendation host your videos on YouTube and embed them on your site. Reason. YouTube has, quote, unlimited space, fastest speeds, and never breaks down. You know, it's got 99.99999 .99 two percent uptime your website depending on the the tier of service you bought at Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever might crash once in a while maybe it gets a lot of traffic that video got very popular and that video is bringing down your site so if you've got your video on a site that's been around you know 13 years going on 15 years um, and is running 24 hours a day has the best technology because after all, who owns YouTube? Google. Google owns YouTube, and they're a multi-billion dollar company. Not quite a trillion dollar company like that other company that just became a trillion dollar company uh, last week. But they've got lots and lots and lots of money, and uh, they invested in their infrastructure of YouTube. So uh, YouTube doesn't crash, asterisk. Uh, YouTube has unlimited storage and um, fast speeds. So it would make more sense to upload your videos to YouTube than have them on your own site, slowing you down, using up your own resources. <clears throat> also, people spend a lot of time on YouTube, and your video could be discovered and go viral. And that means that it spreads that someone watches it, they like it, they share it, it goes to someone else, they like it, they share it, they send it to more of their friends, they like it, they send it to more of their friends. That's going viral. That happens on all the networks, Twitter, Facebook, but it's more synonymous, I think, with YouTube in that the video spreads to more people. If it's on your site, well, the uphill battle is 
people have to find your site first and watch your video and if you don't have a way set up to share the video easily well then it's then stuck there on your site you get built-in possibility of virality on YouTube if you upload your video to YouTube that's one of the big reasons then we're going to then use YouTube as our platform for our videos so let's uh, take a look at the handout. Any questions so far? Does that do these concepts sort of make sense at the moment before we go further? Okay, so let's look at the handout specifically. Um, we created a video, and um, well, I created a video, and we edited it, and we have something to upload. Well, y you, I'm, I have a business. I'm a lawyer, or I'm a uh, daycare center or I'm a house cleaner or whatever and how can I use uh, any social media specifically YouTube for for my purposes well I've got some examples here of types of videos that might be useful I'm gonna play a few of these and then we'll discuss them Let's see if my, my volume wants to work okay so this is the unboxing video Hey, these are all links to YouTube um, that you can follow, and um, I'm going to pause and point out various things as as I show these. But first, uh, hmm, here's an ad, so we'll make a note about this because this is important. Ads. We'll come back to that. So we have to watch this for a moment. We don't have to listen to it, but we have to watch it, and then we can skip it. I come. I. Can. Hey there guys, Zach here from Inveta and welcome back to another video. Now today we're unboxing and taking a first look at the white Microsoft Lumia 650 from, well, Microsoft. Based on what we've seen so far, 16 seconds, it looks like uh, this is going to be a review of a phone. Okay, well, I'm going to jump forward a little bit. Uh, so there's a lot of shots of it and uh, close-ups and cool blur and all of that and then we go on 720p screen not too bad uh, for the price so let's actually just get started with the unboxing so diving straight into the unboxing this is the Lumia 650 box pretty standard for a Lumia device especially for a low-end Lumia device so yes he is going to basically open up the box and talk about opening up the box that's what an unboxing is I'm gonna mute it for a moment and um, it is that, literally, that he's going to look at the box and look at everything about it and then start to open it up. And it sounds like, well, why, why does this, you know, do people like these things and why do people make these things? Well, just on this one example, this has got 224,000 views. Uh, so a lot of people watched it at least once. And um, it is just him talking about opening it up and... And looking at what's in the box and all of that. Well, why might it be valuable for people to watch this? Who cares about opening it up? Like, why? Why does that matter? Maybe. You want to know what you're going to get. So right here, that adapter doesn't look like it's going to plug into any outlet in my house. Uh, so unboxing it. Un, uh, shows that well if you're gonna get this one in the US you probably need an adapter because that plug is not going to work with the plugs in my house so showing you what you're going to get uh, is one reason to have this video Indeed. then on the back we've got an 8 megapixel rear shooter as well as a flash and a Microsoft logo which is kind of standard on all Lumia's these days no longer did it come with a Nokia logo uh, so it goes on like that and he uh, basically talks about putting in the SIM card and powering it up and here's what's in the box so it's it's a review it's a preview uh, it's a popular kind of video uh, in unboxing and it ranges from technology like phones to washing machines uh, you know to baby strollers uh, to everything so it's a form of showing a product in its various you know getting it out of the box so again let me come back to that note about ads 
unboxing videos show a person opening a product, describing it, opining on it, and presenting what you get. Useful for a customer to preview what they will get when they buy. Like, uh, I'm in the market to buy, um, have you seen those handheld uh, stabilization gimbals? These are these things that you can attach your phone to it and uh, it automatically digitally controls it so that it's always rock solid stable, even if I'm holding it in my hand. You usually would think putting your phone on the tripod, that'll keep it stable. Well, sometimes I need to move around on the subject. These gimbals, they grab onto the phone, and then digitally they uh, keep the phone always stable. Uh, so I'm thinking about getting one of those, and I'm looking at a, at, a, at a few possibilities of which one to get. So I'm going to look at some unboxing videos to compare the one from uh, this company with that company to see what's in the box. Oh, this one comes with an extra adapter and this one doesn't. That one that might guide me to get one versus the other, especially if they're the same price, if they have the same sorts of reviews. So they're a way to guide me. Uh, you as a business. So let's say the company Victor's Bakery. I sell uh, cupcakes and cookies and birthday cakes and all of that and I ship them off to people. I could do an unboxing of my own product to show you what comes in our products to show you yeah we ship across the US your cupcakes will be safe they're in this kind of container they're perfectly padded they won't move around uh, as long as the as long as it's you know this side up uh, you should get the cake just fine it shouldn't be damaged. Here's a video showing how you ship your products, showing what you get when people buy your product. This is stealth advertising. This, well, a lot of what YouTube is, is about um, creating a personality. Um, how to say this, that I could be a very boring person and that could come off on the video and that might not be so great in terms of, well, you don't seem very excited about your own product. Why would I be excited about your product? So if you can be animated in your videos or have someone that is animated or jocular in the videos doing something like this, uh, this helps create that emotion for your visitors watching the video too. So as you happily promote your product, you are slowly convincing people to buy it. So for curiosity, let's look up here. Unboxing. Uh, what should we look up for unboxing? Anyone have any ideas? Opening up a box of what? Let's say here, Curiosity, Godiva, unbox, unboxing Godiva, let's see what we get. Mm -hmm. Unboxing Godiva chocolate, seven years ago, 5,000 views. Godiva gold box, 36 Belgian chocolates, three years ago, 17,000 views. Godiva unboxing from October, two years ago, 1,000 views. A Christmas box, okay, I'll just pick the first one and it's only 36 seconds long.
Now, uh, this has got an ad right on the video getting in my way. I can't see the chocolate, so I'm going to go to close it, but whoops, I click here, and then I, and I click on Shop Now. So here's an example of an ad, which again, I'll come back to, uh, but back on the video. <laughs> wow. Ta-da! The dive of the chocolate. The dive of the chocolate. I want that one. <laughs> So 36 seconds long, very low tech. Uh, they just turned on their phone and then they recorded it and then nothing really happened until they opened it up and they said, wow, 5,600 views, 57 thumbs up, no thumbs down. So one difference that YouTube has compared to the other social networks is that it has a negative reaction. Every other social network traditionally has had only a positive reaction in terms of, I'm going to give it a like, I'm going to give it a thumbs up, I'm going to give it a heart, whatever the name of in the network, in Google+, Plus. I'm going to give it a plus one. There's always been only a positive reaction. YouTube, one of the unique things that it has always had is a negative reaction. So just something to note here. YouTube is one of the few networks to have a negative reaction. Action. Every other network has plus one, like, heart, thumbs up, etc. Recently, in the last few years, Facebook has added a negative reaction. It had always the thumbs up, like, for a long time. And people wanted there to be a thumbs down. No, I don't like that, that thing that you put on Facebook. The closest that they did to it was now there's all of those no, new little reactions, those cute little faces, like that little angry face. That's like the closest thing to a thumbs down at the moment, a negative reaction on Facebook. But YouTube actually started off with a five-star rating system. Does anyone remember that perhaps several years ago if you use YouTube you used to be able to like a movie review you could give it five stars this video was great one star it was terrible three stars it was so-so well a few years ago YouTube changed it just to thumbs up thumbs down those two extremes I liked it I didn't like it uh, supposedly under YouTube's um, research or or their company line was people were either giving most videos all five stars or one star there were very few anywhere in the middle which I doubt I think people are indifferent sometimes but I guess you can argue that did you really like it or not and then they simplified it to thumbs down thumbs up so this particular video um, after I watch it I then get on the right side over here. Up next, Godiva Chocolatier introduces Belgian Mousse Truffles. And then after that, Godiva unboxing here. And then over here, Los Chocolates Que Nunca Podrás Pagar, the chocolates you can never afford. Uh, so you watch a video, and unless you change it, the default will be it will show you another video. Did you see a moment ago there was like a little countdown timer happening, and then I stopped it? Uh, that's going to be something interesting and useful on YouTube. So YouTube has autoplay on by default. When one video is watched, it will autoplay a new one for you. People will ask, well, how does it know what to show me? Why did it show me that? That's going to be based on your viewing history. So if I watched one video about chocolate, it'll try to show me another video about chocolate. And there may be another video about chocolate somewhere on YouTube that it could show me. I watched the video about Godiva chocolate. And oh, look at that. It wants to show me more videos about Godiva chocolate the top 10 most expensive chocolates in the world, tempering chocolate with Godiva, etc. So all of these are at least chocolate related. Most of them are Godiva chocolate related. 
So as I watch a certain video, it'll recommend to me more videos on that topic. This matters for us. If we create a variety of videos on a topic, our videos could autoplay for people when they watch our videos, but also when people watch someone else's video. These other ones that are appearing on the side, they're made by different YouTubers. They're made by different accounts on YouTube. I watched one from Teo, and here's one from officially Godiva. And then here's another one from I Love Fuzzy Stuff. And this one's from Kaboom. This one's from All Top Ten. And then another one from the official Godiva company. So you don't have to be one of these big famous companies to appear on some of these search results. You have to be related to a topic that people are interested in. I searched up there with the keyword unboxing Godiva. Let's see here. Uh, I, I say um, smart thermostat unboxing. Nest thermostat unboxing and setup. Third generation, the latest one. Nest Learning Thermostat Unboxing and Review. Unboxing Nest Learning Thermostat Third Generation. I never mentioned the Nest brand of smart thermostats, but this is the most popular one at the moment, so all the results are basically for that product. They do hit the keyword thermostat, and pretty much they all also have unboxing, but I never mentioned Nest. And it's not that net. Oh, here's the first one. That's not Nest. A Honeywell one. And that's not until like the tenth one. But it's not that Nest paid to appear in all of these results because paid results are listed with a with a promoted marker. It's just that this particular brand of smart thermostat is the most famous one. So the most results that appear. I mean, the most results that appear of that type of product are for that company. And we'll get into this deeper, but YouTube really needs you to SEO. What is SEO? Search engine optimization. Search engine optimization. So the uh, SEO. Most of you know this, you've taken other of my classes, or you know about this stuff, but search engine optimization is the art and the science and the magic of getting results when people search on a keyword. Well, you need to engage in that in YouTube itself. People search Google, Bing, Yahoo, to find results from all over the world. People search YouTube to find results only in YouTube. If I go to Yahoo and search smart thermostat unboxing, I'm going to get results that come from someone's blog, from Better Homes and Gardens, from YouTube, from everywhere. If I go to Google and do the same search, I'll get results from everywhere, from 20 different tech bloggers and 20 different home improvement authors and all of that. But YouTube is like a stealth search engine where you can find just about everything similar to YouTube in terms of reviews of products, previews of things, um, how-to tutorials on anything but it's all within the YouTube website, the YouTube ecosystem.
So that means that we need to spend time, and we will, uh, thinking about how do we optimize our videos to be found in YouTube. This is another reason why you want to upload your videos to YouTube instead of on your own website, because your video could be found here and it could spread. That was the unboxing video. Let's move on to these other ones. But any questions on that kind of video? Unboxing. How are they listed? I, I noticed they're not listed by the number of views. So how are they? How do they select who's first at the top of the list? There's some sort of algorithm that is a trade secret of uh, YouTube to display the, these results. Uh, because you're right here. Uh, this has only got 74,000 views. Uh, this one's got 331,000 views. This one's got 28,000. So the one with more views is not number one. There is a possible reason, based on the results, why it might not be number one. Yeah, I just brought off the bat, the top one, thermostat is the second word in the description. Mm -hmm. The next one, it's the third word, and the next one, it's the fourth word. So it might have something to do with the word, word order. Title. It might have something to do with word order or title yeah. and such. Perhaps. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that that's one of the reasons, perhaps. Yes? I have a question. It's um, like they didn't have to get permission from the top. Well, let, 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 me, let me finish my thought on this and then let me answer that because okay. I want to finish this thought about why the rankings. Um, another reason perhaps the rankings are a little different is look at this. This is from one year ago. This one's from six years ago. This would be an unboxing of like the first generation of this thing. And this one would be an unboxing of the newer one. You can't even buy this one anywhere, I bet. It's, it's a six-year-old review. It's kind of outdated. This one's two years old, and you know that sort of like breaks the, the idea. But this one's newer. It's the third generation, the latest one. This one's also the third generation. But again, we don't, we don't know exactly why some things rank better than others. That's only, only YouTube really knows it. But possibilities are the word order, what's in the description, the age of it, and other things. Are they more famous? Maybe this one has more subscribers than this one or this one. We can see that briefly by looking here. This one's got... Uh, what's going on, YouTube? <laughs> this this one's got 214,000 subscribers. This one's got... What's up, guys? Uh, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, and it's so great again, to be like, back well, with some new hardware from Apple. So there. Apple has updated the 13-inch so, and 15 Kind of like you don't quite know um, the full answer, but that's why we're going to talk about various strategies. Question. Yeah, I'm just wondering because they don't have to ask permission from the companies to review their products and stuff, and they need to think of the copyright stuff that we're talking about last time. That's a really good point about getting permission and all of that. Um, that's such a gray area and such. Um, think about it this way. Uh, these companies are not affiliated with the company Nest that makes the product, but they're giving free publicity to Nest. Therefore, to some degree, Nest is benefiting from all of these reviews about their product. If I didn't even mention the name of the company, if I just heard someone saying, you don't have a smart thermometer, you should get one, you're going to save, you're going to save money. And I don't know that there's one called Nest. Here, by searching, most results are Nest. So these companies are giving free publicity, meaning Nest is probably not very mad that their product is being so visibly promoted. Depending on the company, they may be mad that says, you know, this is our product, you need to ask us, you need to license it, you need to pay for it. Most uh, companies realize that they should look the other way, especially in review videos, because that's free publicity. But not every res not every company is going to be that you know liberal about their product. Um, yeah. Okay, reading reading excerpts from it that's a different sort of thing because then you're sort of giving away the product. Now you could be reviewing it via fair use and that sort of thing. So there's a... Books. What's that? I mean literally books. Like a book club, like, do you need permission from the author to like, read parts of a book? Like, in a YouTube video or for your for fun in the, in the group? No, in a YouTube video. 
No, you do need it on that, most likely. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying about giving it away for free. There, this video, I'm watching what the nest is, but I, I can't actually then do anything about it. Reading a book on a YouTube video, I think, veers a little bit more towards, yes, that's going to be the copyright violation, because the company wants the person to buy the book and read it themselves. If you read the book, you're giving away the book for free. I'm we just uh, just one one moment. You had a question here first. What about in the case of a negative review? In the case of a negative review, um, I don't think they're really kind of policing things to see what's positive and negative and t and having them take it down. But with a negative review or any kind of review, you have some protection in saying this is this is for fair use. I would like to give critique on this product, and the and the copyright laws allow us to some degree without getting a license and such to be able to positively or negatively review a product. And again, I'm not a lawyer, but th this is the general kind of idea that is often in play. Yes? Just back to the copyright, I was just kind of wondering if you, if you just give like a five minute reading um, of the book and don't give anything away as a teaser kind of thing, you would be okay with it, whereas if you just sit down there for three hours and record yourself reading out loud, it would well, the three-hour one, definitely, they'll have a problem. Now, the five-minute one, I would still lean toward they still wouldn't like that because even if you don't give away any plot points, you're still, if all that you're really doing is just doing a book on tape on YouTube, that's going to go toward, again, also, the company won't like it. If I read a little bit about it, if I read, if I read about it, if I critique it a little bit, talk a little bit about it, that might be safer. And that again goes back to the fair use doctrine of if it's for review and critique, that's a lot safer than simply sitting down, even just for five minutes and reading the book nonstop compared to three hours. It's still, you're safer when it's about critique and such, critique and review. Yeah. Um, for the views, is it known if it's like that many unique views or is it repeat views count? Repeat views count too. So a person could watch the same video seven times and it'll show they got seven views. That's not necessarily bad, and I don't really care about that. Um, I believe I believe there is a way to check unique views, but just that number right there shows some amount of times. The author themselves could have watched their own video a hundred times. Obviously, they have no life, but uh, it doesn't. You know, those numbers to some degree don't matter in terms of well, do they have seven thousand and seven or seven thousand and seventy-seven? Or do they have 12 versus 22? And, and 10 of them are myself clicking on it. Some of those values don't matter as we kind of learn more about it. Yes? No, there's some amount of time. I think it's like only 30 seconds. If you've got a minute long video and you're watched it halfway through, that counts. If you've got, you know, like a 10 minute long video, it's some amount like one minute or something that it then counts it as a view so you didn't have to watch all 30 minutes for it to count as a view it could have just been a small fraction of it okay uh, let's look at this other kind of video here screen capture tutorial know what makes your customers really click we doubt you do make them want to with buttons big ones everywhere Hello everyone, this is Victor Campos for PMT Interactive. Let's build an Android app in Visual Studio in five minutes. Well, first we need to go online and download Visual Studio 2015. It's the latest version from Microsoft, so just search it. All right, so that might sound familiar, but that's uh, myself in, in our company. And here's a screen capture tutorial in that I'm recording what's happening on the screen I'm explaining what you need to do. The topic of this video is build an Android app with Visual Studio in five minutes. So it walks you step by step about setting up the software and starting to create your app in five minutes. Uh, this video has got 152,000 views. It's got 504 likes and 67 dislikes. 504 thumbs up, 67 thumbs down. And then it's also got 110 comments. Here's another idea to come back to. But this um, this kind of video is someone, it works best for someone showing you something step by step on a computer. So 
So obviously it's not useful for every kind of business. But a screen capture tutorial shows steps to accomplish something on a computer. Not useful for all fields. So why make this kind of video? Like many of the, th of the things we've talked about in social media, um, you can use social media as an advertising tool and, all, and sort of like give a preview, give a little taste of something, and then if you hook them, then have them in, uh, reel them in for, for the sale. So a free preview of something that you then sell. In the example here, in our company, we can make apps for clients. This is a stealth advertisement uh, for, uh, for getting people to hire us to make apps. Because, let me come back to this, comments. Um, down here, people are, are commenting, uh, that is amazing. This lets you build Android apps using C plus C sharp. This is very promising. I've been looking to get Android app development. Are these cross-platform apps strictly HTML5 and JavaScript? How to implement this app? I mean, coding converted to an app like which is available in the Play Store. So people are asking more questions. People are interested in more of the concept of this video. These people that I've identified could be then. Um, potential customers in terms of I can then communicate with them one-on-one. -on -one. YouTube gives you a way to chat with uh, people then one-on-one. -on -one. So I've identified all of these people that might be interested in an app. Some of them will just say, cool, thanks. Others will, will ask further questions, and then you can uh, reach out to them. Let me see if I can show it here, newest. So even a week ago, All of these comments appear here. Comments on a video are a way to identify who might be a good follow up. You can reach out to them one on one. Okay, let's say I'm Victor's Bakery. I make a, a video, not maybe a screen capture tutorial. Well, let's say maybe uh, I show a little video about how to order uh, our cupcake on our website. I could walk people through that. Now, you, you say, well, most people know how to use a website shopping cart. Sure, but it doesn't hurt to create that kind of video. And then in the video, put in also like a coupon code, so idea. Victor's Bakery creates a video, a screen capture video, on how to order from our shopping cart. And we embed a coupon code only found on YouTube in the video. To entice customers. So in the title or description of the video, I could include that coupon, or in the actual audio or video of the, of the YouTube video, I can uh, include the coupon. Can be added to the title, description, or in the video. So I could have a video saying, "Hello, everyone! Uh, uh, in we're going to show you how to we're going to show you how to uh, buy our product, and don't forget to watch until the end of the video to get a special twenty percent off coupon." So I'm telling people at the start of the video, make sure you watch the whole video, there's going to be a coupon in there. Now of course a person could skip and fast forward and all of that, but um, 
you know, you can't force people to really do anything. So they're going to watch the video. So it'll take a moment. Eventually, here we go, my amazing app. So I can click the home button to take Okay, a how-to. Some of these kind of like bleed into each other. This type of video is related to that type of video. So at a, at a how-to. Hi, I'm Celeste with E.B. Stone, and today we're going to be talking about how to plant tomatoes. First, you want to plan the location for your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six hours of sunlight. There's several different ways you can plant okay, tomatoes. Okay, so you don't this need a is a tutorial on how to plant food. tomatoes. You can plant in rows. Containers um, or four minutes beds. long. Regardless of how you plant your tomatoes, views. they all basically can be planted the same way. Picking the and right type I give of this as an example of one of the best of videos. First, you need to figure out what your uh, uses are because of its creativity. For soups, for Even salads, without listening, Check with by looking at it, you see how the shot changed right there. Close up, handheld because it's a little shaky. If then it switches to a longer tomatoes, shot over here, perfectly stable types. on a tripod. First and early There's a so close-up here, a zoom in on. on a photo. Second, that was a still a photo. Tomato. That's a still that photo a as well. And there's text Third, an on the screen. And here's and a little fourth, rotation a on a still tomato. photo, a zoom out. For bed planning, text. First we're gonna fill the bed with so, soil. This one, and then here's a fun effect of... Get a cherry tomato. Beefy tomato. That has a tomato. Eat to it. Third, an heirloom variety, and fourth, the, the, get the a cherry focus, tomato. The blur For raised bed planting, first we're going to fill the bed with soil. Right. Good organic so soil for key to grow great focus. tomatoes. Okay, then here's a it completely different shot, standing up and putting the dirt in and getting to close to the dirt in. To set a good foundation for growth. 90% um, of plant success so is related to the soil. This so don't buy cheap soil and expect took great a lot results. Of effort Next, we're going to dig a deep hole. Um, Tomatoes are one of the few plants with them that can for be planted them or anything like that, but I know deep. this would take a lot of effort here. because the because tripod has to be set up. She talks books for 10 minutes, and that's recorded. To come out. Then we want to remove we're going to say, okay, now let me zoom in and do some stuff with the plant and with the dirt and this and that, and I'll record that for a moment. The to well, start that's got to be edited too into early. the rest of the video. We're gonna massage the roots then there's the shot. Slightly. Let's stand up and have you pour so the dirt. Let's have you kneel down anymore. and put, play with more of the dirt. That was another camera setup. Another position, and you want to another set of things you do. Here's then a close-up of hands of the dirt. And then right here, stealth advertising. E.B. Stone is the company that is selling their own organic plant food. And here's a sort of a long-form commercial. We're selling plant food. We're going to teach you how to plant tomatoes. Guess what? To get the best tomatoes, use our plant food. And you want to plant them two feet apart. Next, we're going to sprinkle sure start around the roots. It'll prevent transplant. So Shots she's going to mention the, the product. Weeks, and it's 100% organic. And continue Next, to give you, you this free information how to water. plant your tomatoes. You and then you're saying, well, I tried it and I planted my plant tomatoes. Started. And they died in a week. When you over oh, well, I needed tomatoes, to buy their the leaves will curl up. This one was a little bit over water before we planted it, so that's an easy way perfectly to pointed towards the camera. Too often. A good way to know if you're so planting is water is to feel all the soil. Stuff is a if it's dry, all of this social media we've talked about for all of these months. Next, take the tomato with the tomato cage. When it comes to tomato cages, size does matter. Most people like to buy these small tomatoes. Giving away information for free. It's going to eventually get taken over. With a lot of effort. And what's the result? We've got thousands of views. We have to confirm in so their bank account how many plant. units they've sold. But now that our tomatoes are planted, self promotion. We need to make sure that we keep more obvious at the end over here. We need to eat. Let me skip forward. The other great thing about organic fertilizers is they won't burn, so you don't have to be meticulous. In it is how to. Today's how-to video is provided by E.B. Stone. Location, at least six hours of sunlight. Pick the okay, right so type of tomato for your needs. Everything that Use high was quality E.B. Stone, organic soil. E. B. Stone organic soil. Remove lower leaves screen. and flowers. Plant your tomato plant deep. Use E.B. Stone Sure Start. Water and use E.B. Stone tomato and vegetable food. 
these are the featured products from today's video. Click on them to learn more. So or then at the very end, then it's very obviously a commercial, but on the first you know, three minutes, I got a lot of good information out of it. And yes, several people, and then it's going to automatically go over to someone else's video. I'm going to stop that. But um, we've, we've got the self-promotion at the beginning and then uh, obvious promotion at the end. Uh, giving away something for free, how to plant tomatoes. And lots of people will watch that first part and then stop it at the end there and not watch the commercial part of it and then not buy their product. That's fine. But imagine that you created this video, you uploaded it, you know, eight years ago, and it's still getting views, and once in a while it makes you a sale. Well, that's almost what you would call, you know, passive income in terms of you created something, it's going on, on by itself, and then it's getting you results once in a while. A sale, a phone call, or something. You never know. So that's why with all of this social media, you want to try it, see what happens, continue with what works, discard what doesn't. And YouTube will give you stats to tell you. Uh, how popular is your video? How many views does it have? Where do people come from? How did they find you? How long do they watch your video? Because people in the class often ask, how long should my video be? I don't, I don't have an answer. It depends on your audience and such. But this will tell you, once you've uploaded videos and starts gathering data, it'll tell you. You've been making five minute long videos, but people only pay attention for one minute. So maybe I'll start to make one minute long videos. And then people watch the whole thing, and within that one minute, I can put everything I need into it. Uh, a beginning, middle, and end, an advertisement, a coupon, whatever. So YouTube is very good at giving you stats about how well you do. So how to... Give away a free... Give away a freebie but cloak it as an advertisement. At the end, add your credits through the video, promote your product. You can be obvious about it or not. In the exam and in the example of that video, like I said, I, I like it Hi, because I'm it's Celeste visually Stone, also very creative. And today we're going to be talking about how to These plant are the tomatoes. kinds of videos that first you want to plan the location of your vegetables. Make sure this spot gets at least six but hours of sunlight. You never know. There, there's there's plenty of videos out there that were shot terribly. The sound is horrible. The camera you can moves. Plant in rows, it was shot vertically for or some reason. Beds. And it still has a million tomatoes, views. They all basically can be Even planted the same way. All that I talk Taking about of YouTube today, there's important. still there random chance, there's still good First luck, there's still bad luck. There's still tomatoes. something maybe that causes it to go viral or, or, not. or maybe in This video, when I created it, I was not expecting it to be popular. It was just something that I wanted to put out there as a possible way to drum up some uh, activity, and, and it worked. It, um, got thousands of views. So later on, I created a follow-up, because this is from 2015, then I created the, the follow-up video that was now got more views than the original one. And um, also, this is, uh, this is making me money off of YouTube, people watching this and, and all of that. And I'll get to the monetization aspect of it. But that's another possible reason to use YouTube as well. It could be a little bit of side income. You make these YouTube videos, they, you could be then profiting from them. I'll get into the details and nuance, but I can tell you for myself and some clients, making money off of YouTube is a possibility too. Let's see here, review, a review type of video. Locals know it's the local business. Okay, so here's an advertisement happening now. Awesome. I'll let like this one play so for a moment. So what's the crazy Advertisements so are going to be one of the ways okay. that um, you make money off of YouTube. Crazy. If you put an no. ad on your videos that could profit local, you. Right? Yes, sir. But I'll talk local about the nuances of that no. when I get to that idea. I it's irresistible. <laughs> Hey guys, Brian Tong here from CNET.com and in my hands, yep, I have Google Glass. This really has the whole tech world buzzing. We wanted to really break down what this is. 
Now the first thing is not everyone can get a pair of these. You had to be part of Google's Explore program and they cost $1,500. They don't come cheap. But what this is really for is for developers. Uh, okay, so this is an example of a much more professional um, uh, effort. This comes from CNET, one of the big names in, in tech reviews. They've been around like literally 20 years online. And they have, you know, uh, uh, you know, people that are trying a to camera up, you know, personality that is comfortable in front of the Google camera. Glass. They've got text that appears, here, sound effects. You saw then the shot of the product and it was rotating, and then other shots of it and, and it pointing it out, and all that. Right so here. this is a this professional is endeavor compared to kind of what we might be able to create. But it's another kind of a. It's another kind. It's another kind of a. So let me show you how these work. I'm going to put these glasses on in, Kev. I make these look good. Check it out. All right. But the first thing you have to do is first of all, you can either tap the side or do a little head bob and it activates the screen. You can see it turn on and I'm going to start by saying, okay, glass. Okay. Let's give this a shot. Okay. Glass. I have a variety of options and here I'm going to say record a video and you'll see my screen change. And now you guys can see what I see. I have Michael and Jay here. Hey boys, say what's up. Wave hi. There you go. Right now you can also do a lot of other things with this. You can um, use them for map directions. You can actually Google items, names, people, or places. And it does require a data connection. So that means you're gonna have to have a phone tethered to this over Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi. So my first impressions of glass, I mean, these things are amazing. This is really the future and we've never seen anything like this, but wearing them is, is a little socially awkward. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? You're gonna kick it later tonight, man? Jay. But really, this is the future. So again, much more professionally shot in that there was a little comedic interlude and then there's swipes between the shots and all of that. But it's a review of a product, very short, one minute, 43 seconds. You get an overview about this is an interesting piece of technology. It has this, these features, it has these possibilities to do. Yo, Jay, what's up, bro? You're going to kick it later tonight, um, This has got 33,000 views, 472 thumbs up, and, and so forth. Uh, and then it once once you watch that, then it uh, goes off to other examples of uh, of that kind of video. Um, so that kind of uh, video is an obvious kind. So review videos. You review a product. Well, okay, for us as a business, let's think to flip it around. I, I'm, I've been saying so far, you create these kinds of videos about your products. Let's flip this one around. This is a perfect example of get people to review your product for a reward. Rewards can be anything from Anything from like, um, you can call it uh, internet fame to tangible things. Okay, so Victor's Bakery, I sell these products. I put it out on Twitter or Facebook or whatever and say, hey everyone, um, if you bought any of our cupcakes, uh, do a little video about it and your, on your next purchase, you get a free cupcake. So I'm enticing people do a review for us. I didn't say review, I just said, you know, talk about our product. Do a review for us, and you get something free. Now, I might not want to give away free cupcakes. I could do um, review our product, and uh, you'll get a shout out on our next video. People love that. People like to just simply be acknowledged in someone's video, or mentioned in their tweet, or their Facebook post, or whatever. That's that fleeting internet fame, which a lot of people now put a lot of value on simply uh, getting mentioned by someone else on, on social media. That's, that's good enough. Now I'll do a quick review about you. Of course, you're not able to control that actually then they did a sarcastic review about you, or that they did a mean review, or that they did a negative review. You can't really do anything about that. I suppose if you want to go through the whole trouble of doing a sort of like a, a litigious thing, and getting a lawyer and then having them take it down, sure, but then now you spend hundreds of dollars on perhaps something that wasn't worth it. Uh, the, the genie's already out of the bottle because then that video, that negative video that they made, then uh, you can't really get rid of it. 
So the idea there is how can you convince people to give you free advertising? You give them, you give them something by um, you, you give them something in return for them giving you something back. The next type of video, we'll look, we'll look at these two, then we'll take a break. Lists. Let's check this one. I'm going to show this video as an example of a list type of video and also as an example of a not good video. I showed you the one about the tomatoes as a good video. This is the opposite. First of all, we've spent 15 seconds and nothing has happened. We saw their logo. Let me replay their logo. The world is spinning and the sea flies in says Greater Charleston, and don't forget we're on the web, so .com, and it shines really nicely, and then it says their tagline, triumphant music playing, and then finally the video starts. In the world that we live in of short attention spans, 17 seconds of nothing, meaningful, is 16 seconds too long. So they want to self-promote that way good. It's good that they want to self-promote, but they've wasted way too much time in uh, that self-promotion. So that's strike one. They're, they're sort of like logo self-promotion is way too over the top, takes too long, wastes time. So after the real video starts, here's a strike two already. Maybe why don't I like it at this point? That text looks terrible. Why is it so blurry? Especially on this projector, it looks really bad. Maybe they're trying to do the effect of a real typewriter, but it doesn't. It, you were going to see in other parts that, no. So again, here, uh, the visuals. YouTube is such a visual thing. And if you get half of the equation wrong, the visuals, that's, that's a big deal. So strike two, that they have low quality text. Sabatino Cavallo here, greatercharleston.com. This is the first installment of the New York Perspective. And what better subject is... Okay, strike three. What's wrong now? It's too dark and it doesn't sound very good, too. He's got a microphone up to his mouth, basically, but I can still barely hear him. Let me back up. Sabatino Cavallo here, Greater... You saw from the high volume of the music originally in the title, and then suddenly it's a lot lower when he's talking. And even though he's got a microphone. This is the first and yeah, the, of the, New York perspective. the side the lighting is, is a little harsh. Than the top five New York style pizza places in the greater Charleston area. As the video goes on, you still see how low quality it is. It is. Look at this. Look at this line broken up in low quality visuals. So it continues to uh, to be low quality. It's not just the uh, the text, but the whole like the whole camera, or maybe it was compressed in a very low quality setting. When we worked with Adobe Premiere last week, we had the option about quality settings, and the default that we chose was fine. It was a good setting. For whatever reason, this is set either to a low quality setting when it was exported, or it was recorded with a low quality camera. And you know what they say about computers, garbage in, garbage out. So if you input some low quality video into your computer when you export it, it's not going to make it better. It's going to come out as bad or worse. For the first installment of the New York Perspective, we had to go with pizza. After 10 years in the pizza industry in the Bronx, New York, I know what to look for when it comes to great pizza. Um, low energy delivery on that bit of text if he's passionate about this five New York style pizza restaurants reading that right off of the script didn't really convince me about uh, how 
much he likes the topic. We judge these five great New York style pizza places on different criteria. Taste of a cheese slice, taste of sauce, crust construction, specialty item, and affordability. Our first stop was at Vincent's Pizzeria on Highway 7. We're at Vincent's Pizzeria in Mount Pleasant, number five on the list. Now I got something special to show you. Okay, I think we're like on strike nine. Um, what's going on on this one that might be negative? Let me play that one more time. First. We're at Vincent's Pizzeria in Mount Pleasant, number five on the list. Now I got something. What's annoying about it? Visually, sure, the the soda gets in your way. At least it didn't. It, at least it didn't trick the focus. Because sometimes a camera will think that's in focus and he'll be out of focus. That's not the main thing. But okay, we'll count that as a strike too. Anything else? Maybe that was annoying about that. This part. The guy. <laughs> Low angle. I wouldn't say is bad. That might be an artistic choice. But sure, if you didn't like it, then it does show that there's possibly something wrong with it. Uh, what about the sound? <laughs> First of all, there's a constant buzz or drone or hiss in the background. Why didn't he use the why didn't he use the microphone at that point? Most likely they are using the the microphone built into the into the camera which uh, which also is capturing the ambient sound of the oven and the fan and the and the crowd. So in this case bad sound. He could have been holding the microphone or he could have used those kinds of mics that I mentioned before, the lapel microphones, the ones that clip onto your shirt. When the microphone is that close to your voice, it's going to record your voice and drown out the other, the other sound. The now, sound was so bad, I thought the microphone was just a prop to begin the, the microphone might have just, just been a prop, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't plugged in. Uh, so here, it would have been benefited for a better sound. Now, sometimes even with one of those clip-on mics, uh, it can still pick up a little bit of a hiss. Well, you can use software, uh, like in Adobe Premiere or other software, to minimize the noise of a sound recording. Maybe they already did, and that's the best they could do, the best results. So again, that's another strike there. It's just, you know, I, I don't want to be really down on them, but I want to show you that by looking at examples of good videos versus bad videos, hopefully then you make the good ones. Let's watch a little bit more here. This is a plain cheese slice, but I call this pizza precision. Always... Okay, so the problem here is I want to see the pizza, but at that oblique angle, I can barely see it. Uh, I should have the camera a little bit higher on it. I think he does lift it up, but uh, again, just the cinematography of it is not that great. And the problem here is with any sort of creative thing, when we create something either visually or in coding or anything painting whatever we either are our harshest critics or our nicest critics in terms of yeah I'm existing in this place at the moment I can see the pizza I can smell it I think I'm talking about it really well but then when it comes together with the unflinching eye of the camera no the angles not good the sound is not good and maybe this was one of their first videos. Well, they did say, here's our first into the, the reviews of whatever. Maybe the later videos got better. But I wanted to pick this one as a not good video. Have here is a uh, beautiful crust on top, followed by a safe of tomato sauce, which you should always see right after the crust. Now over here is something really special. Take a look at this. This is a fried calzone. Now usually calzones are baked, but with cheese and sweet goodness. Okay, so he goes on like that for nine minutes. Next it's not a Giovanni problem that it's nine March minutes. Year, I wouldn't fault that at biggest, all. Like um, because people can fast forward and such. But uh, just like, you know, the technical aspect of it is it's just insane. that it's... Um, there's, there's too many problems and such, but jumping out to the end... Urgent. This one here it's a really is a, a white. When, when the um, next we're off to Giovanni's on Market Street, where they have the biggest slices and in town. The, let's see if they do it right here.
You can tell it's a really good pizza parlor when the door is that filthy. <laughs> Little uh, pizza so to finish on, on top. It's an amazing pizza. And then the, the owner's back there, kind of watching, like, I hope you review as well. Pizza places in the great. So there you have it. So there you have it. Those are the top five New York style pizza places in the Trader Charleston area. That's our list. Try these delicious places. Tell us what you think. This has been Sabatino Cavallo. One vaguely good thing that he's going for is he tried to do a little audience interaction there. He says, that's our list. How about you tell us yours? He could have been more about, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below, tell us what you think. At the moment, you see down here, it's half and half, eight thumbs up, four thumbs down. Just about 3,000 views. But he could have used more of the opportunity, and this is what you need to do now more of, more a day, nowadays. Nowadays, engage more with the audience invite them to comment, like, share, subscribe, to be a part of it, not just talking at them, even though that's what it feels like. I'm going to record something, they're on the other side of the camera, I'm talking at them. They don't have a way to reply to me. They do. They have the ability to comment, or like, or share, subscribe, and so forth. You have to then engage with them and be active. So it ends at 8.50, but then it goes through, again, their logo for 15 seconds. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, so they don't have a lot of a lot of views in general. I mean, they don't have a lot of subscribers in general. Comments, no comments. So not really a lot of activity. So one more then we'll take a break. Uh, this one is the obvious advertisement, some sort of commercial, an obvious commercial f for your for your product. So this one, 38 seconds, this is one that we did for a client, actually. Uh, not a huge amount of views or activity or anything like that, but this is an example to show the, the this classic kind of a usage of YouTube. It's, it's a commercial. It's, one dish uh, that you know you're gonna get that kind of commercial. 
There's another one related to that. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, um, what did that entire video, like timing, what did it start off as and you ended it as 30 seconds completed? Does that make sense? It was a lot of footage recorded, yes, but the way we maximized our time was uh, to be there for a couple of hours in the kitchen observing what they were doing and recording a bunch of things. And this is when I said about last week about you might have an idea before going to record or you might record first and then make the idea. In this case, we went and we recorded all of the footage and then after the fact I thought, well this fits with this and it fits with this and with some music it'll work. Or the plan could be we want to go and we want to make sure we record these three dishes and we've got to make this kind of video. So in, in this particular example of the client, it was a bunch of footage that was shot in a couple of hours and then some amount of time editing it all and then cut down to 40 seconds. But um, uh, why 40 seconds versus 30 seconds or whatever, that's kind of arbitrary. It's just based on the story or the visuals or whatever you want to showcase in the, uh, in the video. Here's another one in that same vein. Let me play this one. the same idea in terms of various steps of preparing the dish. Um, there's a style of close-ups with some blur around the edges to focus in on the main subject. You know, a lot of close-ups, especially for food, is very good. And then here, kind of quick cutting. You don't have to see putting every single muscle down, and it's like cut, 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 and then the plate comes together. Uh, and it has then the same idea about then at the end the camera sort of tilts like this to show you you're looking down on the plate. So if the client had then decided to do more, they would sort of continue in that vein, in that style. Okay, and then there's also a still shot. There's like a flash, camera flash, and then it's a still shot. So there was an idea after the footage was shot that like, well, all of these things kind of fit together. Um, this would be like a series of commercials. That client actually has done very well without uh, really spending a lot of money in, in most forms of advertisement. Their food really speaks for itself and the word of mouth. So we made those two videos. And again, five years later, there's several things that I would improve about it. On the projector, it looks way too dark. On the monitor, it's a little better. But still, I think the color correction of it would, would need to be improved. This is one of the first videos we did, and this was done with Windows Movie Maker, which is the free video editor. They don't really make it anymore. Um, but it was able to do all of this and put the music and the, and the editing and the cuts and, and the text and all of that. Um, this one, uh, not that much also, 164 views. Now, these two took a lot of effort to create. But then this is what I'm saying about there's something about there's something to say about luck because here's another one that we did for them that has way more views but much more low tech. Oops, let me fix that. Uh, you know better than me, preparation of good food is done with the fresh ingredients. Simplicity in preparation of food which makes the difference. And as my mama used to say, Canta nella cucina, which means sing while you're doing that and be happy, and this is it. God bless America. I love you guys. Thank you. Okay, furthermore, we're about to serve the risotto al nero, garlic olive oil. We sauteed some uh, fresh black mussels. Okay. So, to honestly say, on a technical level, this video is terrible. Uh, because it's too dark, it's kind of wobbly, the sound is horrible. But compared to the two that I just showed you, 2,400 views. It's got a lot of personality. 
he's got a lot of personality. That might really sell it. Uh, also, probably other things such as the name of the dish, risotto nero. That's, you know, black risotto. It's made from squid ink. And then so jumping ahead. <laughs> Once again, we saw tornado, we saw this, some fresh black mussels, some calamari, garlic, olive oil, charcoal products, and we have a reserve set. We saw tornado. Probably, because it still also looks quality-wise different. Do you have an idea when you go into these places how much B-roll footage you're going to capture? Until the memory card runs out. You want to just record as many things. Now, that's the idea, again, about do I have an idea beforehand? If you have an idea going in, if you have an idea going in then, there would, then there shouldn't be any wasted time or shots or anything. But you never know. Something spontaneous could happen, and hopefully you're recording it. Or... Um, in these examples we went in and we say, well, let's see what happens, and we record and then we put it together. I've worked in both ways. Um, I, I sort of personally feel I like the spontaneous way about, let's record, let's see what happens. I kind of like that challenge, and I think that uh, nowadays with more experience, I've gotten some good results. Uh, those two other commercials that were much more polished, that happened that way too, about let's just shoot some video, let's see what happens. But I think for a lot of people, it would be very frustrating about, well, I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that, I can't go back and re-record it. So I think for most people, you really want to be there with a plan. I want to get these kinds of shots, I want to show this eventually, so um, have a plan. You don't always get happy accidents. Uh, so those were those there. Let me show you one more, and then we'll, uh, we'll take a break. This is just one from my own, whoops, not that one. That's someone else that took my name. Um, I want to show this over here from my own personal one of fun things that I have here. Um, so one of my hobbies is comic books. I've been going to San Diego. And I've been to Comic-Con, and here's a video that I shot about Comic-Con people dressed up at Comic-Con. So here's a little music video from last year.
So that hopefully gets you the idea of how crazy Comic-Con can be and creative and how people are dressed up. So that was from last year, uh, just from all the different days that I was there, just a bunch of different footage, uh, lots of footage, and then pared down to 2 minutes 23 seconds. And then it's the intro with my friend there, and then the music synchronized and all that. That's a... Uh, Mostly a Canon T two I. The latest one is the T seven, so it's kind of a later camera, but it's one of those There's lots of kinds of videos then that you could make for uh, YouTube, for your business, or for personal and such. And like I said, uh, if you can make money off of YouTube, maybe one of the purposes to use YouTube is also some passive income, some fun videos and that sort of thing. So we'll take our first break in a moment. General questions on what we've talked about so far with these items, and we'll look at this other stuff in a moment, but general questions on these types of videos? Okay. Uh, yes. It depends on how much money you make, yes, but usually, you know, technically, uh, if your kids have a lemonade stand they're, they're, and they're making money from that, technically you're supposed to report that too. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a business. It's income from a third party. You, you would get a 1099 that you would then file for the, in your taxes because that's being reported by YouTube. All right, so it's uh, 11.05. Let's take a break until 11.15, and then we'll go on.